give me a happy marriage. That prayer cannot be answered. I'm not cursing anybody. The prayer can only be answered when you have done what you should do. God will not do. You can't ask God in prayer to do what he has already commanded you to do. I'm going to be speaking in second and third service on how the blood works. Help us see how the blood works. Revelation 12, 11, fix your eyes, let's see it, read it together. One, two, go. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did love their lives to the dead. Once again, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Please be seated. You can read God's word to be educated. You can read the Bible to receive education. In fact, when you see people like Paul, the apostle, being referred to as learned, the school they went was the synagogue where they acquired their PhD. So the Bible can be read in order to receive education. So you can read the Bible and be educated. I'm serious. <laughs> there is no particular thing we go to school to learn in school that are not in the Bible. There is science in the Bible. One of our brothers here went for MBA in UK. And at the early part of his program in MBA in UK, every assignment they give them, he was dusting them. And he told us he was actually writing the things he learned in church. And the prof one of the professors asked, have you done this course before? He said, no, but some of these things we are doing, we've done it in our church. You can read the Bible and be educated. You can also read the Bible and be entertained. There are so many interesting stories in the Bible. You can read the Bible and be entertained. You, are you the type who likes love story? It's in the Bible. You like action? Action films? 1 Samuel 17 is recommended to you. You see action. Any kind of film, any kind of entertainment you want is in the Bible. So you can read the Bible and be educated. You can read the Bible and be, and be entertained. But most importantly, we are supposed to read the Bible and be edified. Nothing is wrong to be educated through the Bible. Nothing is wrong to be entertained if you need entertainment. But most importantly, when we read the Bible, we read the Bible so we can be edified. To be edified means to be built up. Is it in the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 32? I commend you to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you your inheritance among them that are sanctified. So you can be built up in the spirit through the word of God. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of his, the mouth of God. You can come to the Bible to gather information. That is why the Bible is still the most popular book in the world. What are the Allah fast doing with the Bible? Most times, the Muslim clerics, they all have a copy of the Bible. They all read the Bible. In fact, Abalists, they have Bible. Most occultic people, they read the Bible. Because you can also gather information from the Bible. But most importantly, we are supposed to come to the Bible to gather revelations. Information is good. Information will take you to certain levels. But there are some levels you cannot get into until you begin to receive the revelation of God's word. What is revelation? The revealed truth. Information is like an head knowledge. But revelation is the root, the, the, the behind the scene informations. 
Information is, oh, Jesus died on the cross. They nailed him on the cross. They beat him. They did that. All that happened in the physical. But revelation is everything that was going on behind the scene. The back, they call it the back end. Everybody say the back end. Many of us are using our phones. We're using applications on our phones. We have gadgets. We have systems. We have iPad. We have all kinds. And we're using all those applications. But ladies and gentlemen, those are, the, those are the things that everybody can see. But for those who are into IT, they know that behind the, there is the back end operations. Am I correct? And if you are a child of God, if you don't begin to acquire revelations and begin to gather revealed truths, you may not be able to go too far. Like I said, information will take you some few steps forward, but revelation will take you far. When Saul, Paul was Saul, he had the information. He was a Pharisee, he was a Sadducee. But when he had revelations, it started from Acts chapter 9. When he was going to, his, to Damascus and Jesus obstructed him and revealed himself to him. And he said, who are you? He said, I'm the, I'm the one you are persecuting. That was the turnaround in the life of Paul. Today will be your day of revelation. <laughs> Nobody encounter revelation and remain the same. Nobody. What about Jacob? He slept and he, got a, he caught a revelation. He saw ladder. He saw angels coming and going. That was a turning point in his life. Nobody encountered the revelation of God's word and remained the same. Why our church has not struggled to grow is because before this church started by the grace of God, with all humility before you, I went into some serious studies of how church can grow. And I found, look, what I found, if I say it now, if you don't catch it, it will just like, like an information. What did I find? I found in the book of Heart. He said, and the word increased, sorry, he said, and the word grew, and the people what? Multiply. And God told me, Focus on the word. The multiplication is not your assignment. Because everywhere there is carcass, the eagles gather. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You need a revelation for that business. When you catch the revelation of business breakthrough, no matter where you do business, you will excel. No matter under any government. I know we all have the information about financial supply, business growth, and all those things, but you need to catch the revelation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you catch the revelation of marital success, it won't matter where you live or who you live with. What will matter is that you've caught it. Are you following me? I came to church yesterday. We came to do a few things. I met some young men who have been in church for a long time. And I asked them, uh, there were three of them. One was married, two of them were not married. And I said, greet madams for me. And the other two said, there's no madam. And I, and I decided to, this is I have a little time. I decided to spend some few times with them. I said, you are supposed to have madam by now. They said, there's no madam. Then I began to share from deep revelations to them. How to catch a good madam. You know there's a revelation for that. You can be in church for 20 years. If you don't catch it, you will, you will toast every sister they will give you no. You will be angry. You will leave the church. You say the church, they are not good people. All of them, they are bad people. <laughs> because maybe you, are, you carry the old mentality of how you used to toast people in the world. You brought it to church. So everybody you spoke to, they got angry. There is a revelation behind divine health. That if you catch it, you too can say openly, I cannot be sick. Once you catch it, it's your own. You can say openly anywhere, 
I can't be sick again for the rest of my life. When Bishop David Odepo caught the revelation behind prosperity, he said, it is too late to be poor. He didn't have money yet, but he has caught it. Today you will catch it. You didn't say me. I said, today you will catch it. You've been gathering information, you will, cut, you will catch revelation. That is why, you see, so you can be in church for 20 years. If you are, all you are gathering is information, nothing will happen. Somebody can walk into church the first day of coming into that church, catch a revelation, and everything starts changing. Today is that day for you. Amen. Today you will catch the revelation of increase. Amen. That in the midst of everything going down, you will be going up. Amen. You are not saying amen. Amen. One other revelation that every New Testament believer must catch is the revelation of the blood. Ladies and gentlemen, if all you are catching is information, you do, I don't know if you have ever been in a service where you're hearing a message, all of a sudden you caught something and you became wild and you are shouting and people are saying, ah, well, they can't see what you see. You are the only one who can explain what you have seen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, ever learning, but never come to the knowledge of truth. It will not be your testimony. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. He said, ever learning, always learning, always carrying Bible up and down, always attending church services and listening to the word, but never able to come to the truth, knowledge of truth. He doesn't catch the revealed truth. The truth it's not, you can't read truth. Truth is only revealed. Revelation is only revealed. That's why they call it revelation. Revealed. Revelation. I caught the revelation of divine health in 1992. I broke down as a youth pastor. Of, my, of our church then. It was an embarrassment. It was fever. My pastor led all the associates to come and greet me. They met me under a serious blanket. Shivering. <laughs> me that I used to preach in church. And all the associates gathered around my bed and they were pitying me. And I pity myself. And after that incident, I say, God, uh -uh. I've had Kenneth taking cell for 50 years, no headache. I've had several. When will I? He said, then I caught a revelation. I began to study the, a particular book, uh, The Power of Positive Thinking, because God told me, he said, Tunde, the problem of that sickness is your mind. Your mind is the problem. Renew your mind. So I spent the whole of that year reading books on the mind. Reading everywhere, the Bible talks about the mind in the Bible. I had a concordance. I will open it. I will be looking at where did the Bible talk about mind, the mind. I read Proverbs 23, verse 7. So as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And that day, when I was reading that scripture, something jumped at me. He said, if you can't think sickness, you can't taste sickness. He said, your problem is that you are thinking it. You are, you are entertaining it in your heart. You too, you believe that human beings are like machine. They can break down. And once you believe it, it will happen to you too. Then that was the beginning of my divine. Things just began to change. And till today, this church is 23 years. I've, I'm yet to go on sick leave and I will not go. Yeah. 23 years of church. I've been preaching more than once on Sunday. Twice. For, since 2022. Am I correct? Yeah. Uh, 2001. Uh, customary court. Since 2001. This church has not done less than two services. Is it that two or three? We'll finish third service. All those who go with me, we're on our way to Ikorodu to go and inaugurate a ministry. We will finish in Ikorodu. We're on our way to <laughs> in fact, one of my people that used to drive me up and down, he told one of his, there's no, we're not walking like the, you, you, which walk are we walking? We are playing now. He said, you. but despite the schedule, my body remained intact. 
somebody is here, you will catch the revelation behind divine health. You will say bye-bye to sickness and disease. You will catch the revelation of divine prosperity. You will say bye-bye to poverty forever. You will catch the revelation of increase. You will never be st stagnant again for the rest of your life. You will catch the revelation of a life of excellence. Mediocrity will be far from your tabernacle. If you are saying it, let it be louder. Say, I will catch it. So he said, they, have, they are learning you know, always, but they are only acquiring information. They don't come to the revealed truth. It is the truth that set free. Are you hearing me? John chapter 8, verse 32. They shall know the truth. No, they shall hear the truth. You can hear the truth and not know the truth. The truth that is known is revealed. They shall know the truth. And the truth shall be what? And the truth shall make, it didn't say set them free. Make them free. They won't be set free. To be set free means that you will have a testimony that you are free. To be made free means you'll be the testimony of freedom. You'll be a testimony. Are you, do you see the difference? You'll be made free. And what God has made free is free indeed. Today is your day of freedom. 